In this lesson, we'll continue our review of writing test 10, section two. We're now on the fourth and final passage, an employee benefit that benefits employers. According to a 2014 report from the Society for Human Resource Management, 54% of surveyed companies provide tuition assistance to employees pursuing an undergraduate degree, and 50% do so for employees working toward a graduate degree. Despite these findings, more companies should consider helping employees pay for education because doing so helps increase customer satisfaction and improve the quality of the company's business. All right, so two questions here. 34, which choice provides the most effective transition from the previous sentence to the information immediately that follows? So before this sentence, if this is the opening paragraph, the opening sentence here, it gives statistics that according to this report done in 2014, r roughly over half of companies provided tuition assistance to employees pursuing undergrad degrees and 50% and for employees working toward a graduate. And now this next sentence, more companies should help consider. Well, 50% is a pretty, it's a pretty good number, right? It's, it's about half of a, or, right? It's a little bit more than half. Despite, so is this in spite of these findings, right? I don't think this really works because we already have like a pretty respectable number. So if you look at the choices, in addition to the 2014, more companies, again, that's really not an effective transition. Although these levels are impressive, more companies should help consider. This looks good because it's acknowledging that even though currently half of companies provide some type of assistance more companies should consider helping this is definitely the best transition it's acknowledging that it's respectable but asking for more so the answer here is c and 35 which choice most effectively establishes the main idea of the passage and this is an evidence-based question we know from this first paragraph it's encouraging that employers should even do more to assist their employees toward their educational endeavors, more companies should help consider helping employees pay for education because doing so helps increase customer satisfaction and improve the quality of the company's business. This is not related. This program to help employees pursue education is not directly related to customer satisfaction. It may be indirectly, but that is not a direct result could be a secondary result. And we even have clues here improving the quality of the company's business. So think about what would the direct result be? And we already have this from this opening paragraph. Let's look at the choices. Solve the problem of rising tuition. Again, that's not, that's not the reason that employees or employers should do this. Strengthen the U.S. economy. Again, I mean, that, you know, this is just one company. How about attract and retain employees? This is the reason they do it. They want the employees to stay, and this is definitely a, a better choice. It also improves the company's business because they have employees who will stay for a long time. So another evidence-based question, the answer is D. All right, let's take a look at the next paragraph. Tuition reimbursement programs signal that employers offer their workers opportunities for personal and professional development. So do we need a, an apostrophe here? Is this any possessive here? Offer their workers? There is no possessive here. And if you look at B, opportunities, there's no possessive. This is a double possessive. This one I think is very straightforward. There's, there's no possessive here. Their workers, that's just a plural subject. Opportunities, that's just a plural noun. The answer is C. According to Professor of Management, Peter Capelli, such opportunities are appealing to highly motivated and disciplined individuals and may attract applicants with these desirable qualities. Many in the business community concur, explaining his company's deci decision to expand its tuition assistance program. John Fox, the director of training at Fiat Chrysler Automobiles in the U.S., who stressed the importance of drawing skilled employees to Fiat Chrysler's car dealerships. This is a benefit that can surely bring top talent to our dealers, he said. So question 37. So we have this long sentence here explaining his company's decision to expand its tuition assistance program. And we have John Fox. 
And then we have a non-essential clause, the director of dealer training at Fiat Chrysler Automobiles in the US. So whenever you see a non-essential clause, it's just giving extra information. It's not going to change the meaning of the sentence. And just think about crossing it out and you just it should still link. And so now let's read it. Actually, I probably shouldn't have crossed out John Fox, just what he does. So John Fox, who stressed? That doesn't make any sense here because we have a non-essential clause. Fox, who stressed, doesn't make sense. You just need a verb here explaining his company's decision to expand its program. Fox stressed. We don't need this pronoun, this relative pronoun. Fox stressed the importance. So that'll help streamline, I think, when you see these non-essential clauses just to... To, to help link the two parts together. And so the answer here is just to, to get rid of the who and it is.